These are the top five defensive incantations for Elden Ring PvP. Faith has some really amazing buffs, and we're going to be starting with Law of Regression. It has the neat little characteristic of being able to cure status effect buildup and any status effects that are currently ticking down on me. So go ahead and inflict Scarlet Rot on me with that sword. So you can see I'm afflicted with Scarlet Rot. My health is draining over time, but if I activate Law of Regression, boop! Scarlet Rot is gone. So it'll cure that status. It'll cure any status buildup. But that's not the only thing the spell does. My friend here is going to buff himself up. I'm going to show you another neat little feature of Law of Regression. So you can see he set himself on fire. He's buffing his Sword of Moonlight. So you can see he has these two buffs active, both a weapon buff as well as a character's spell buff. If I cast Law of Regression near him, just like that, both buffs are gone. The sword is no longer buffed. The fire is also no longer buffed. So Law of Regression not only is very good for eliminating status buildup for yourself and allies, it's also really good for getting rid of buffs off of enemies. So if an enemy is buffing themselves with, say, Barrier of Gold or Black Flame's Protection, some kind of spell that makes it a lot harder for you to deal significant damage to them, then you can cast Law of Regression and completely wipe those buffs off of them. Do be aware, though, that Law of Regression doesn't just remove buffs from enemies. I buffed myself with Barrier of Gold here, so you can see I've got this little greenish-blue R around me. If I cast Law of Regression, you can see I no longer have the buff. So it doesn't just remove buffs from enemies, it also removes them from allies. So do keep that in mind. Now on to the next buff, it is Dragon Bolt Blessing. Before we talk about what this buff does, from a positive, I do have to mention a negative aspect to it. As you can see, all of my defenses are at zero. We're just making that the sort of baseline so we can more clearly see what these buffs do. I am using the Erd Tree Seal plus 10, but it really doesn't matter. As long as you meet the minimum stats to cast these spells, your incant scaling doesn't matter. You're going to get the same benefit no matter what for these defensive spells. But as I was saying, we're at zero on the percentage damage mitigation on the right as you can see if i cast dragon bolt blessing i get this lightning effect around me but it does have the negative side effect of significantly reducing my lightning resistance you can see now it's negative 35 percent which is a pretty massive decrease so i'm very vulnerable to lightning right now but if this person starts hitting me with a one-handed small weapon like a straight sword you can see now they bounce off of me and this is very nice because while they're bouncing off, they're vulnerable and I can counterattack. I can hit them with something if I had some kind of weapon. And since that's a smaller weapon, I could actually stack enough poise to where that wouldn't be a problem. So for example, I could throw on some bull goats real quick and then now go ahead and hit me. And as you can see, they get staggered from hitting me, but then from that one initial hit, I don't get staggered. So it opens up the opportunity for me to very easily counterattack, which is very, very handy. If you two-hand, you don't get staggered. So if you ever fight someone using Dragon Bolt's Blessing and you're like bouncing off, you're like, what do I do? Just two-hand your weapon. That's all you got to do. And it's no longer a problem. But a lot of people don't know about this miracle. It's kind of underused. So you'll rarely see people be smart enough to actually start two-handing. They'll usually keep one-handing or maybe they'll panic. They'll freak out. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so do be sure to take advantage. It's a nice little trick. So next up is Barrier of Gold. This is a very powerful buff it will reduce damage taken by magic by 60 percent which is insane that is a massive amount of mitigation so you can see we're at the baseline of zero percent damage mitigation across the board when i cast the buff we go all the way up to 60%. That is a huge boost. It is worth mentioning that, yes, there is a version of the spell for all of the elements. So for magic, for fire, for lightning, and for holy. However, I do feel the magic one, if you had to pick just one, I would take the magic one for PvP. It is the most common elemental type you're going to be dealing with. That's what Moon Veil is. When people try to spam the Comet or the Stars of Ruin or a Swift Glintstone Strike, there's tons of popular magic abilities that are used in PvP. So you will get more value out of Barrier of Gold than you would get out out of most of the individual buffs. But before I go into more detail, I need to explain to you exactly how the percentages stack up with each other. Because you might think, oh, well, that's a 60% damage mitigation, so, but you're naked. If you throw on more armor, then it'll just add up to some bigger magic defense number, right? Well, the percentage defenses are not additive, they are multiplicative. So what does that mean? Well, let me give you an example. Let's go ahead and remove the buff. So we're back at zero across the board, right? And as you saw, the magic buff added 60. Let's say I put on Moog's robe, the Lord of Blood's robe. You can see it gives exactly exactly 10% magic damage mitigation. So you think, okay, we'll cast the magic buff and then 60 plus 10 is 70, right? I should get 70, but we will not get 70. You will see, in fact, that we're going to get 64. And there it is, 64. You might be wondering, why is it 64 and not 70? Well, the way that works, because like I said, it's multiplicative. You don't get just a flat 60% mitigation added. That's not what happens. What you're actually getting is the amount added, 60% of the gap between where you are now versus 100. So allow me to explain. I'm gonna remove the buff again. 
you can see that we're at 10% magic defense because of this robe, right? If we were at zero, the gap between zero and 100 is 100. 60% of 100 is 60. So you add 60 defense when you cast the spell. But now we're starting at 10 because we have this robe. And it wouldn't matter, by the way, if I put the robe after or before casting the spell. That makes no difference. But right now we're at 10. And if I cast the spell, the gap is now 90. Instead of being a gap between zero and 100, it's a gap between 10 and 100. So it's a gap of 90. So you actually only get a boost of 60% of 90, which is 54. So you get 54 added to that 10, which as you saw, becomes 64. That's how the damage mitigation works. And that's what we mean when we say it's multiplicative, not additive. But do be aware that does go both ways. So if for some reason you actually have negative defenses in the game, like let's say I put on this charm, it puts negative 30% resistances across the board. So now the gap is 130. So that means 60% of 130 is actually going to be 78. 78 minus 30 is 48. So if I cast Barrier of Gold, now you can see it's at 48. It's multiplicative, it's not additive. So you actually get more than a 60 boost if you have negative reduction otherwise. But I mean, <laughs> hopefully you don't have negative reduction otherwise. That's not good to have unless you're some kind of bizarre glass cannon. But just trying to explain exactly how the multiplicative aspect of buffs and damage reduction, the percentage aspect, works in this game. I hope that makes sense. So now let's go ahead and test some damage numbers. So I'm going to remove this buff. Let's throw on a few health boosting talismans so I can take some hits. We're going to throw on Urge Refavor and we're going to throw on Crimson Amber. All right, go ahead and hit me with the Comet Laser. So as you can see, that did a massive amount of damage. That did what? Looks like about 1600 damage, something like that. We're going to go ahead and heal up and then we're going to cast the buff and see the damage difference. significant damage reduction. I mean, 60%. Now we only took 600 damage instead of 1600, roughly. So that was a massive improvement. Definitely a very, very nice defense increase. We're going to heal up again, and then we're going to test this with Stars of Ruin. As you can see, that did about 750, 800-ish damage. About 800. All right, we're going to heal up, cast the buff, and compare with the buff. So now that did only around 300 damage. So once again, significant damage increase. Around 800. It was more like 770, 780, something like that to about 300. Very, very nice spell. Great counter to mage builds. Highly, highly recommended. Next up is Protection of the Erd Tree. This is a nice jack of all trade defense spell for elements. As you can see, we're at the 0% baseline for damage reduction across the board. But if we cast Protection of the Erd Tree... Now, we have 30% damage reduction for magic, fire, lightning, and holy for all of those, which is really, really nice. So, let's go ahead and compare some damage numbers before and after casting this buff. Law of Regression. Buff is removed. All right, can you go ahead and hit me with Stars of Ruin, please? So, you can see we took about, like, 780 damage from that or so. Protection of Erd Tree. Now, go ahead and hit me again. Same spell. And it looks like that was 534 damage. A bit of a reduction, 30%. Not 60% like Barrier of Gold, but still something pretty nice. Definitely worth having. Can you go ahead and hit me with a Fire Spell now, please? Okay, that Fire Spell did about 600 damage. Now we're going to heal buff up. So from about 600 to about 400. Very nice reduction. Lightning Spear did about like 770 damage, something like that. All right, with the buff, we instead took something around 539 damage, approximately. A bit of a reduction. Very nice, very nice. Can you go and hit me with a Holy Spell now, please? That was a nice amount of damage. That did 1,040, roughly. All right, now hit me with the same spell, please. Should do around 700 this time. A little over 700, like 730 roughly. Very cool, very cool. Nice. So as you can see, it's what we would expect. It's about a 30% damage reduction from all the elements. It's not huge. It's not 60% like we had from the Barrier of Gold. But the nice thing about this spell is that it gives you that 30% reduction from all the elements simultaneously. So if you want a bit of a jack-of-all-trades elemental defense buff, this is what you want. Next up is Black Flames Protection. This is a physical defense buff. Now, as you can see, we're still at 0% baseline damage reduction before casting this. Right after I cast this spell... You can see our physical defenses shoot up to 35% for all forms of physical defense. Physical versus strike versus slash and versus pierce. Now, it is worth mentioning this buff does also have a downside. It reduces healing by 20%. So now we're going to go ahead and remove this buff so I can show you the before and after damage differential. When I get hit by a giant's crusher. This might actually kill me. I don't know. Holy crap. 
That hammer's a beast. That did about 2,000 damage. That did just a little less than 2,000. Wow. Now we're gonna pop the buff and we're gonna see how much damage we can mitigate. All right, same thing. Buff up and then jumping heavy. All right, so still a monstrous amount of damage. But instead of taking almost 2,000, we took about, what is that, like 1,300? Again, 35% damage reduction, so that's pretty close. That's about what we'd expect. Definitely a nice buff to have, especially if you're running naked. Please don't be running naked. <laughs> this will definitely help you survive physical attacks much better. And lastly, we're going to have an honorable mention, Golden Vow. It's a very nice jack-of-all-trades sort of buff. What I mean by that is it will increase the damage I deal by a little bit and also increase my overall defense for everything by a little bit. How much exactly? I'll I'll show you in a moment, but it is worth mentioning that the numbers do vary depending on PvP or PvE. For PvE, you get a 15% increase to your damage and a 10% damage reduction, and that's what you're going to see when I cast the spell here. Once again, 0% defense is baseline. If I cast the spell... It's 10% across the board, but according to the wiki, it's actually only 5% for PvP. So I guess whenever a player hits you, you only get half that benefit. So very negligible. Not a huge increase, but it's something. Better than nothing, right? And like I said, in PvE, you get a 15% damage increase, whereas in PvP, it'll only be 7.5% damage. You can see I'm at 528 there on the AR for this sword. If I pop Golden Vow, we go from 528 to 608, which, yeah, I believe that's something around 15% increase. I mean, it's definitely over the 10%, but according to the wiki, it's actually only 7.5% for PvP, so it's not really quite as strong as you would expect, but it is still a worthwhile buff, and it is an honorable mention after this top 5 list. Speaking of which, I hope you found this list helpful. I would like to see some more of these buffs being used, because they are really, really good. Please leave a like and comment, subscribe. It helps a lot. Good luck with your invasions!